So I'm in a bit of a weird place in the schedule whereby I'm waiting for epoxy to dry, so I've got nothing more I can really do. Um, so I found some maple offcuts that we used in remodeling the house and I'm gonna try and make a box. Um, so let's square these up and take it from there. Not the greatest surface finish, uh, but I can fix that up with some sandpaper. Okay, I guess unsurprisingly, um, it's worked out okay. I got some chipping on the end grain here. Uh, not too surprised because I'm using my uh, ripping, uh, my cross cut face mill rather than my ripping mill. So uh, that's to be expected. What they really should get is a like a little, you know, uh, slotting saw and I can move the workpiece this way. Maybe if I mounted it vertically and I could like push it through, that would be cool. Um, I wonder if such a thing exists. Anyway, I've got these squared up. So I've just finished milling out a lid and a pocket. Um, a lot of chip out. Not the right tool for the job, but it's never stopped me before. <coughs> so I was able to square out the corners uh, good enough uh, for it to fit using just a 3 30 second end mill. And uh, gave the box a bit of a sand. So far it's looking pretty good. Um, I'm getting my grubby hands all over it, which means I'm going to clean it up. Um, but let's now make a pocket in here for the necklace itself to sit and a place for the chain. So I pocketed out the spot for the pendant to go. It could have been a tighter fit, but you know, you've got to be able to get it out, I guess. And another spot for the chain, which I've already checked fits in here if you wrap it up nicely, but you get the idea. Now this little circle up here is for um, this ring that I made by uh, cutting off the end of a spring and um, flattening it. So I've got a, my snap ring pliers here. I'm going to see if I can get this ring inserted without losing an eye. Right, that's in. Everything fits pretty tightly in there, which is good. Uh, this needs some more sanding and some finish. While I'm waiting for the epoxy to dry, I've decided to do some more work on the box using the Shaper Origin. Um, I pre-ordered the Shaper Origin as soon as I heard about it on Kickstarter. I thought the technology was really cool and find a million and one uses for it. The reality is I played around with it when I got it. It was a long wait to get it. Um, it's really cool, um, but I've never actually used it for a real project. If you're not familiar with what it is, it's basically a handheld router um, with a twist. And the twist is that the spindle uh, can move, I'm not sure what the exact XY travel is, but it can move a couple of thou or a couple of hundred thou, I think, I'm thinking, um, to compensate for your hand movement. So what you can do is you can take a vector graphics file, like an SVG file, upload it to this thing via the cloud, um, and it'll show on a screen here the picture of your, um, your path, 
and you'll trace it sort of by hand following the arrows on the screen. But you're not going to be super accurate because you're doing it by hand and you're not a computer, you're not a robot. Uh, but this is a robot and it'll compensate for, uh, for any errors that you have in your movement uh, by moving the, the, the router around in the X and Y direction. The way that it does that is using computer vision. And so there's this special tape here that basically has a random dot pattern on it that allows this to locate itself in the XY uh, work surface. And um, it uses that reference to work out how far off it is and it'll compensate accordingly for your hand movements. So it's really cool, really awesome technology. Uh, the reason why I haven't really used it much is uh, the work holding is kind of weird. Um, I think it's designed in a lot of the demo videos I saw when it was sort of uh, in the Kickstarter phase was taking the entire sheet of plywood and cutting you know, furniture out of it. In that case, you just whack the tape down, uh, I think roughly every six inches over the plywood and just go for it and work directly on the plywood. I often, I was thinking about using it for more sort of cutting aluminium and smaller things. And so you end up having to make jigs. Um, and so I just quickly whipped together this lovely jig that you see here. Um, out of some three quarter ply. I've got a test piece before I do my real piece. And that sort of sits in there nicely. I might put some hot glue down to hold it down. Hey kitty. Um, but I'll get this all set up and I'll bring you back and we'll do a test cut. Right, so now that it's booted up, we have to, I believe, scan the workspace. So, there we go, new scan. It's been a long time since I've done this. Press the green button, and you just zoom around. It builds up a two-dimensional map of the workspace. Problem is, this tape sort of stuck to itself, and, um, The printing has come out poorly. I'm hoping that enough of the fiducials will get picked up. Processing images, please wait before continuing to scan. All right. I think luckily the good tape is up on this end and that's the direction I'll be facing. So I think that's a good scan. Finish. The scan is done. I think we want to import a design. Here it is, downloading the file. And this file looks nothing like the file I opened. Huh. It is now, unfortunately, a few more hours later than I thought it would be to get this working. Um, I guess, you know, I was complaining about work holding with the shaper, and this isn't too bad for, for, for this piece. Uh, the other problem is it involves computers, and I'm pretty good with computers, but sometimes they can be annoying. So what I'm trying to design here, or my little design, I'll show it to you, if you can see it on the screen there. It's uh, the initials JKMF. Um, I guess it's a modernist take on a cattle brand. If you want to waste a whole bunch of interesting time on the internet and you're a bit of a typography nerd, go look into cattle brands. Uh, it's really interesting stuff. But anyway, um, so I wanted to, to do this. I drew it up initially in Inkscape and I uh, was excited to load the file up in here and I opened the file and the shaper said that there were no objects in the file. So uh, I had a quick look on the web. They said you could use Fusion 360. So I went and used Fusion, redesigned it. Well, it started to redesign it and then realized it didn't have the same control over the typography um, that I had in Inkscape. And so Fusion wasn't going to be the right path. Anyway, to cut a long story short, I ended up having to sort of edit the SVG file in a text editor. The SVG file format isn't too complicated and I was able to get this to work. Um, and uh, I've got my hot glue gun warming up here now so I can glue this scrap piece down and I'll do one more test, but here's uh, the last one that it cut, but I figured it'd be nice to show you uh, what it looks like in action. All right, let's uh, see if the glue gun is warm enough. One of the great things about being an adult is being able to glue things directly to your own table. I think that is from Mr. Wintergarden. 
Now, technically, I should rescan the workspace because I've moved the workpiece, but I'm just doing a demo, so let's give it a go. Import. There we go. Scale 0.6 inches high. That's good. Place. All right. Um, go to the cut menu. We'll do a Z touch because the hot glue height has changed the Z position, and that's pretty important for engraving. All right. We're doing a 20th hour cut, which should be good. So what you see in the circle is, I don't know if you can see that, hopefully, um, is where the tool can move under its own uh, forces, uh, just moving by itself. So if you sort of center the letter inside that circle, with the spindle on, you can cut without doing a lot of moving. All right, and that was it. You'll notice the F, I have to do it as two separate objects. That's because of my SVG messing around this. And that turned out pretty good. Um, there's a lot of fuzz inside there, but I think I can clean that up. Um, maybe I will go a little deeper. That was 20 to help. Let's try, I wonder if we can go back over it and uh, change it to uh, 30 thou, 0.03. Done. This will be a good test of repeatability of both the computer vision system and uh, motors. Yeah, 30 thou looks great. I'll bring you in for a close up. That's what 30 thou looks like. But I'm gonna make it pop a little bit more on the final one, which I'm now feeling pretty confident and ready to do. So let's get that going. I may have watched too many Four Eyes Furniture videos, but I figured a pop of that really nice blue on the corner would look nice against the maple. It's a grand reveal. Looks pretty smooth. You'll notice my strips are mainly up the top because the camera's facing this way. Um, so hopefully that's good. Updating workspace. All right, let's import version nine. We'll get a rough sense of where we want it. Okay, we want it near there. If it looks straight, it is straight. Right. Try point six inches again. Yeah, I think that'll be nice. Place. Um, cut menu. Z touch. I'm going to Z-touch right in the middle here. Just because that's where it's going to cut anyway. Alright. I did the last one at 30 thou. The one before that was at 20 thou. I'm going to go back to 20 thou. I just think subtler is better. All right. Let's not fuck it up.
Oh, that's messy. The paint chipped. I thought it was dry enough to do this. Maybe with some time on an exacto knife, I can clean that up. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so a little bit of fine work with the pointy thing and the bladey thing and the bristly thing and it came out okay. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, from a, a fuzz perspective, it looked pretty bad coming directly off the machine. Um, looking at it now, I wish I did a, a shallower cut. Maybe I went from 30 to 20, maybe I should have gone to 10 or 15. Um, just with the blue contrast, the, the, the line weight is heavier than I wanted. Um, but yeah, I think that's okay. I'm gonna give this now another very, very light sand and clear coat it all. It is Valentine's Day morning and I think I'm done. Um, the second coat of epoxy on the back uh, has really made the pendant super clear which is awesome. No, not perfect, but pretty good. Um, it's interesting, the fern has lost a little bit of its color, uh, but the moss is looking great. I'm now getting my yucky fingerprints all over it, so uh, I'll stop touching it. Box came out pretty well. Um, I rushed and did a bit of a thick layer of uh, clear coat, so it's not a perfect finish, but it's good enough. On top of clear coat, I'm going to have to clear coat this aluminium uh, so that things like my fingerprint that I just put there don't stain it, but um, I can do that afterwards. I think this is good to gift. I made it in time, just by the nick of time. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Off to the next project. Let's get this... See ya.